Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. George Baker here in Dallas, Texas at my home, Hauptwerk, Oregon. Today for Micro Lesson 7, I wanted to share a little video interview that we did yesterday at SMU with special guest Philippe Lefebvre from the Cathedral of Notre Dame in Paris. Philippe has been a close friend of mine for 50 years, that's five zero years. He was a student and protege of Pierre Cochereau and of course now is following in Pierre's steps as organist at the Cathedral of Notre Dame in Paris. Philippe was in town visiting on vacation and he agreed to teach my improvisation students, which was a great thrill for them and for me. And I wanted to share that little video interview. He, we talk about improvising in a dead room on a terrible organ, what to do for your very first improvisation. I found that rather interesting and a few other things. I think you will find this very interesting. I would also like to say that Philippe wrote an essay in my workbook for organ improvisation that he called The Wind of Freedom. I think it's a very lovely essay and you can read it in its entirety in the workbook for organ improvisation. If you'd like to purchase that workbook, as always, I'll put up a link that you can go to and uh, purchase the workbook for $50. It's 284 pages and I think it's full of interesting exercises that will help the improviser to get better. So without any further delay, let me now play our little video interview from yesterday's session at SMU in Dallas, Texas. Thanks for watching. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is George Baker, and I serve at SMU in Dallas, Texas, as the adjunct associate professor of organ, where I teach organ improvisation. And we are seated at the Fisk Opus 101 at SMU's Carruth Auditorium in Dallas. Today, I have the fantastic honor and privilege of welcoming to our campus Philippe Lefebvre, who is the titular organist of the Cathedral of Notre Dame in Paris, France. I've known Philippe for 50 years. We met at Chartres Cathedral on the very day he won his improvisation prize with Pierre Cochereau as the chairman of the jury. And Philippe has actually improvised in front of the great Marcel Dupré. Sure. And as Marcel Dupré wrote, to be an improviser, a good improviser, you have to have a, a great organ technique. You have to know counterpoint, fugue, harmony, music history. You have to have played the great organ repertoire. So I have two questions for you today. Question one, how does an organist who's improvising find his or her own voice of expression? Mm -hmm. Question two, how does one overcome the fear of improvising in public? Uh -huh. So those two questions. Okay, thank you, George. Uh, as you told just now, when you are an organist, you play the whole repertory. And in that repertory from many composers, you have some of them who are your favorites. And you, you, you have in your art many things and, and many uh, emotions about some music. And at first, for in the improvisation, I think it's the same thing. You have to feel something in your art, and not only in your ears. And the second thing is, you for improvise is to tell it to to tell a story to the people. You you have to create that story, and the story is your story, and you have to. With the time, you, 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 you are in the condition of what is my own harmony, 
what is my own counterpoint, not only what I practice from the other composer, but how I can create that in my ears and in my heart. And the second thing, in my opinion, it's for the second question also, it's many things depend on the organ and the atmosphere of the room. You know, when you are at the church, if for, in improvise for the liturgy, when you are in a concert hall, it's a, a improvisation for, for the, at the end of the concert. But the most important thing is what the organ tells to you. What, the, what is the sound of the organ? As the sound is going in you. And after, when it's going in you, you can give to the people. So, the inspiration, in my opinion, it's not only what you know about harmony, counterpoint, etc. Not only the architecture of the improvisation, but also the, the whole sounds of the organ. Because that's the sounds who have the emotion and you can uh, uh, hear, hear in my, in my body, because the sound comes in my body, and you need to send that to the people. Yeah, it, it seems to me that uh, you and Olivier and Vincent at Notre Dame are so lucky because you yeah. have that ancient stone church with that beautiful acoustic and that uh -huh. gorgeous organ, uh -huh perhaps the most beautiful organ in the world, you have that to inspire you. Yes. We don't have that over here. We don't have that here at SMU, unfortunately. You know, eight seconds of reverb with 150 stops. And so it, it must be difficult when you go out to play in a room that's, sure. that's dead. Sure. And there are sure. many rooms like that, many churches that are not very reverberant in America. And not many organs are inspiring. So. You know, if you have to improvise on one of those instruments in a dead room, uh -huh. how how do you survive that that experience without just throwing your hands up in the air? You you survive because you have the sound and you have the music, not for not always the sound because there is no acoustic and sometimes the sound is dead, but you have the sound in your in your head. Yes, and that can help you. I think sometimes it's only harmony, sometimes it's a melody, and you, in, you hear that in your head before you hear the sound of, of the acoustic of the room. And that and carries that, you through. And that can help you, because yeah. you have to, when you improvise, you, in, you hear all the things before you play. And ah. that can, is before you play. Ah. And that helps you, because you, you and sometimes it's, it's, it's difficult because you hear that and you play, and it's not like you want because the sound of the church is dead. And, uh, yeah. But you have heard before, and that's its uh, inspiration. You can conduct that thing. I see. So creating it in, inside, your, inside your head and, yeah. and almost creating a virtual experience in your head and, and hopefully that, that carries through and, and communicates with, with the audience. And another, another Interesting. point, because another point, uh, it's not only in your country, you have sometimes a church or a room with no acoustic, you can find everywhere in the world. But uh, another thing is when you have to improvise in that kind of situation, you don't, prepare that. Because if you prepare something before it's, uh, the sound is dead, your improvisation is dead. So I never prepare an improvisation in that kind of situation. I Even wait, the registrations? I, 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 only some, only s some registration. But I don't play because uh, it, I am sad if I play. Ah, so I see. I, it's, so I wait the last time in the concert for the improvisation. Interesting. Because it's instant, in yeah. In, in, yeah. In, immediately. Okay. And you keep in your energy and your ear are free. Right. Okay. One question I would have, perhaps some of these people listening and watching would ask, 
okay, where do I start? What is the first thing I can do to make my first improvisation? Do I just play a chord? Do I play a melody? Start with a folk tune and then add a chord? Uh, what, what would your first recommendation be for somebody who wants to improvise for the very first time? For the very first time, yeah. uh, at first it depends on the atmosphere where you are. If it's at home or if it's a service yeah. or in a concert, but if it's the first time I suppose it's not a concert, right. yeah, well, it's true. Not. but perhaps at the service you have prepared something at home and play for the service. Yeah. And at first it depends on the atmosphere of that. You are, if you are at home there is perhaps no atmosphere. Yeah, sure. But if you are in the service, you have to improvise two minutes after the sermon, after the a lecture, after an hymn. That's the first condition. What is the sound, what is the music before or after your improvisation? And ah. it, that's the most important. And sometimes if you play after uh, a lecture, for example. A sermon? A sermon. Yeah. You have here the sermon and the atmosphere and the end of the sermon. Uh -huh. What is the conclusion? And what do you have to do after? Yeah. That depends on that. I and see. sometimes it's only one key. Because you're, you're, you don't know exactly what you want to do, but you hear the end of the sermon and the sermon was very peace, with peace and, and friendly. And sometimes one key is enough and mm. the rest come after. Mm. And, mm. and mm. sometimes, sometimes you are sustained like this at the end of the sermon and sometimes you play a, a very soft chord. I see. And that's the, uh, that you have decided, but you cannot decide before you hear the sermon. Yeah. So you, you prepare some, some uh, registration and you hear that. What? Priest said to us what I yeah. feel about that and so you you sort of musically continue yes the yes the mood of the sermon to match what uh, yes. that mood happens to be I, 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 I remember a very old uh, time 30 years ago in Notre Dame in Paris the priest make a sermon the sermon was about the apocalypse yeah it was terrible yeah. Was a, it was a fight between the uh, angels and dragons and so on. Sure. And at the end, it was, it was an explosion. Yes. At the end of yes. the sermon. Yes. And uh, he, he, he cried. The priest cried very long about oh. that. So after I. Pah, yeah. Tutti. It was the time to put. Shamad. Yeah. It was the time for that. Yeah. And Got after it. that, at the end of the service, the priest asked me, You understand what I want? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. That's. Just great. Well, thank you for these thank you, wonderful ideas, thank wonderful you. words, and uh, we look forward to your advice and uh, counsel today with with my students. Yeah, sure. They, they will have I fun. Am, I am They're very, very honored, and thank you. I am very for being here. Goodbye. Thanks, brother. Thank you.